Page of 13. Can you hear me? Unfortunately, yes. Perfect. I noticed that, while our connection was down, you made headway and you're nearly at the temple. You haven't experienced any particular problems. Piece of cake. Nothing to report. I'm extremely satisfied with you, Subject 13. I believe you have been by far the most reliable subject. Your reward is the least you deserve. To obtain it, please join me in the temple. Our next discussion will take place face to face. January 19th, 2013. I have come back to study the machine in the complex. Their research is much more advanced than ours. I have to confess that I'm clueless to what it's all about, but the energy residue feeding the machine has fantastic properties. Still with no news of Sophie, I set off in search of the source. On the way, I shook off an angry bear by taking refuge in the strange stone relic. I had to cut the rope bridge behind me. I must find some other way back to the complex. When I arrive, the temple doors open and I heard that kind of dying voice again. Obviously, there's no one inside. However, I did discover that what is in the temple was constructed by a completely different civilization to our own, maybe even by extraterrestrials. I managed to make the mechanism in the monolith work, and that activated something that looks like a kind of three-dimensional holographic interface. I'm going to need time to understand how it works. It's a pity Sophie isn't here. She would have loved it.
November 14th, 2006. Sophie has consented to marry me. I am the happiest man alive. I met her earlier this evening to propose to her. Sophie is always very punctual and she was already waiting for me. But I was already 20 minutes late and desperately trying to find a taxi. I arrived just as a sleazy individual was approaching her. He walked off when he saw me, but I have a strange feeling that something terrible might have happened had things turned out differently. It's only when you're in danger of losing a loved one that you really become aware of your feelings. October 26th, 2010. It worked. That damn cat has become the first living being to ever travel to her parallel reality. A small leap for him, a giant weight off my back. October 27th, 2010. An emotion-filled day today. Sophie and I tested the machine for the very first time. As a guinea pig, I selected the superhero figurine that has been sitting in the lab for a while. But our engineer, Mike, practically threatened to quit if we laid a finger on his toy. Just as well. The vase we sent instead was broken to smithereens. As an aside, we found a small black cat in the lab when we arrived this morning. Nobody knows how it got here, but Sophie adopted it instantly. We have called it Schrodinger, obviously.